it was really uh, a pleasure showing you around my explored um, or probably I've not spoken about it so much in my previous lives. So I thought that today, let me talk about that and a lot of other things. So ever since I was a little baby, I was always tall, you know, so I went to Cathedral and John Cannon. I finished my um, junior school in Manchester in Kingswood uh, Junior and I returned to Bombay. So I wanted to go to a school where all my friends went. I wanted to go to Villa Teresa, which is this convent. And my father said, no, I'm not sending my daughter to a convent. I don't want her to be a nun. I want her to be exposed to boys and girls alike. And then he put me in Cathedral and John Cannon. On being admitted there, I used to go there, you know, the first month in my own clothes because it takes a while for the uniform and everything to be made. So I used to wear these check skirts, Scottish uh, skirts and blue zones and everything. I had braces, I had a short haircut. So I looked like, you know, a bit of a tomboy, uh, a girly tomboy, you could say. So I was given a really hard time there initially, you know, everyone was like, oh, she's got braces and she's this and she's that, because even that school is filled with elitist uh, little brats. But when sports, I was really inclined towards sports. You know, there was a uh, high jump, there was a uh, long jump, there was 100 meters, there was 200 meters, there was relays. So I participated in all the races, in uh, all the sports there. And uh, I kept on winning the gold boycott, you know. So um, they were aghast. They were like, oh my God, she's just winning and winning and winning. They obviously didn't know that there was a lot of preparation that went behind it when they used to coolly trot off in AC limos back home. I used to actually stay back in school and you know, practice my long jump and everything. So there was a lot of prep that went into me, like winning all the goals in, um, uh, in the annual sports day. And then the next thing I know that uh, I'm informed that I'm being awarded as the sports girl of the year by uh, the chief minister. So I said, wow, this is fabulous. And there in the auditorium of Cathedral and John Cannon in Fort, um, everybody's sitting with their parents, you know. So we had all these esteemed socialites and, and, and uh, public figures there from Shobha Dev with Avantika to with Nisaba, to a host of other people uh, who used to study with me. Uh, yeah, even Mr. Azim Premji's son was with us in, no, he was with me in uh, college. Okay, so we're sitting in the auditorium and then they announce, you know, uh, sports girl of the uh, Pooja Mishra. And they are sitting with my mom and my dad. And I was called up on stage and the chief minister awarded me, you know, that you won the maximum amount of goals in 100 meters race, 200 meters race, long jump, high jump, relays, tug of war, all of it. So you're awarded sports girl of the year. And that was like the most thrilling moment for me because when I'd walked into that school initially, you know, I'd been victimized, living with me as though I'm some like, you know, I don't know what, they were just brats. They were more bothered about what brand of shoes are you wearing? What brand of watch are you wearing? You know, so superficial, but then there were kids. So it's okay. Kids are not really very mature at that age. So that was my uh, tryst with sports uh, in um, high school. And then I went on to win the intermediate championship in uh, swimming and diving. Now, second home besides uh, where I used to stay at Nipinsi Road, Hyderabad State. Mornings there, afternoons there, evenings there, you know, just uh, chilling in the library or swimming and swimming and swimming. I used to swim like 110 in the pool and it's a huge pool. Uh, you know, the deep end is, uh, I think, uh, 10 to 11 feet. So I used to go and swim and swim and swim and, you know, just sunbathe with the, the cage rival and the chicken sandwich there is like amazing. So, um, and the iced tea. So I used to either do that or I used to be at the library reading up. I've always liked reading a lot. So I used to be in Willingdon's library or I used to be by the pool. And sometimes you'd even find me in the restaurant, which is uh, catered by China Garden or in the salon getting a manicure and a pedicure then. So that was my second home. 
So I used to swim there out of my own will because my father was very uh, adamant that his kids know how to swim. Every morning at six in the morning, he'd come and he'd whip me and my sister out of bed. Say, come on, get up, time to go and swim. And we used to go in the morning and start swimming at Willingdon. My mother, on the other hand, used to be at race course walking. So my father was like really, you know, driven towards fitness. And I would really want to give him all the credit uh, for inculcating fitness to be an integral part of my life today because had he not pinched me all those early mornings at five and six in the morning and literally picked me and my siblings and my mother and all of us up and taken us to uh you know uh, do things like swimming and being uh, aware of uh, uh, one's health and how important fitness is to it and then i don't think it would have been in me since a child okay so then uh, came the intermediate championship of swimming and diving. Now, I used to swim at Willingdon with my sister and um, family friends. There was Arjun Jolly, there was Twinkle, a whole load of circle of friends. So Twinkle got to know about this intermediate championship of swimming and diving. And she told me, you apply. I said, are you crazy? No way and everything. I was very averse to it initially. She said, you just apply. And I applied and I'd been swimming out of my own passion, out of my own hobby. I did not really, you know, need to, um, sort of uh, prepare for this one because I was swimming as it is all the time, every day, every single day. So I went and I participated and it was heavy duty competition. Even Arjun Jolly, I think, was participating in this one, was he? I don't know. I don't remember. No, he was in school. They were pretty, you know, they were also well uh, prepared. So I won in uh, freestyle swimming, breaststroke and uh, diving because, you know, I could dive in various ways. I could do a normal dive, I could do a somersault dive, I could do butterfly stroke, I could do freestyle, I could do a breaststroke, I could do backstroke. So, I mean, I knew everything. So, um, the next thing I know, I've even won this one. I was like, really? I can't believe this. It's like I've been doing this because I love to do this. I didn't swim 110 laps every day in Willingdon thinking that one day I'll accidentally land into an intermediary, uh, you know, championship of swimming and diving. It just synchronized. And um, I won it. I, I got the trophy. I even found the picture somewhere, uh, you know, I was looking for it, put it in a biography with the principal and everything. Uh, gave me the trophy. <laughs> so that was also a memory and we came back home and uh, my mother knew i'd gone for some uh, swimming championship and she wasn't even expecting doing it. so we walked inside my sister twinkle and me and my mother sitting in the living room and then uh, twinkle tells my mother she didn't win anything you know she should have participated only she didn't win anything so my mother said hi you thought i see hair and this that she started her nagging which is her patented unique selling point all she does is nag all day anyways so then uh, i came from behind i showed her the trophy Ta -da! i did win it she's just messing you she's just like you know fooling around and she was so happy she smiled such a happy smile and i think that was everything for me that was everything for me i didn't care about uh, the you know cash prize i didn't care about the adulation or the recognition but that smile on my mother's face that pride in my sister and my friend's eye that was everything for me so you know ever since child i've had that sports girl mentality that's why even in big switch i was forcibly made second i didn't accept it you know when you don't accept something you just walk out of there because when I know I'm first, I know I've given it my all. I know I've torn two of my ligaments being uh, a part of your reality show and winning the task. Then you're telling me I'm second. I'm going to walk out. I don't accept your judgment. So that's how I walked out in Big Switch. And then um, as far as Big Boss is concerned, you're seeing it episode by episode in my vlogs, what all I was put through. And then, uh, of course, welcome Bari Meman Nawazi ki. They wanted to do a spillover of Big Boss. So a girl called Anmol was planted there and she was just trying to revive the whole Big Boss bullshit on me. And I kept on not reacting, kept on not reacting. I think eventually I did blow up on her once because she was just getting a bit too much. So you see, it just uh, sort of, you know, when you are a sports 
person, when you are a fitness enthusiast, when you've taken part in competitions, and you have a certain mentality. And to win those competitions was never easy, you know. It's, you have to push your mind beyond its limits. You know, so many times I can't do this. And you just said, no, I have to still do it. I have to push my mind, I have to push my body. And when you push yourself so hard and you know that you've got a record of winning, then if somebody possibly stands as a loser, then I think nobody will accept it. Nobody will even tolerate it. So this has been uh, my past and the whole thing about uh, fitness. So I thought that I'll just share this with you because, you know, I see all these uh, celebrities who are glamorous and everything and, and, and they have no sports background. They don't know a donkey's arts about, uh, you know, uh, what it takes to be a sports girl who's won awards and what exactly goes into a sports person's mentality. I feel like laughing seeing the endorsements, you know, with pulleys and with yoga blocks. They post their pictures on social media. I'm like, yeah, really? We back here in Pune do it the raw way, you know. We don't have your fancy pulleys and your fancy ropes and your fancy um, shortcuts to, to being flexible and doing calisthenics. We do it the raw way. If you've seen that movie Rocky, you've seen tech boxer who's got all the technology on his side, who's got all the training, you know, and he's like, got it really simple. Stallone goes back to his village, and he's literally, you know, dragging logs in 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 uh, uh, um, uh, snowy weather, and literally training himself the raw. So I think in that respect, I would like to compare myself to a Sylvester Stallone. All these chicks endorsing Reebok, Adidas, and Nike. You know, you got a cakewalk there. You want to show me a handstand you did learning through pulleys and through ropes and all this jazz. Well, you can get out. I learned it the raw way. And it's going to stay with me till the day I die. Can you imagine there was a time when for around a year and a half, I did not practice. I did not practice calisthenics. I did not practice. I did not go to yoga class. I didn't do anything. And then I went back to Bombay for those 90 days. And I uh, dialogue, you want to sing a song, you want to dance, whatever you want to do, you can do. So everybody is singing, everybody is dancing, everybody is doing all their dialogue bazi. But I did my calisthenics and I got like, and I surprised my own self. I said, holy God, I haven't done this in like, a year and a half I haven't practiced. I've even put on a bit of weight and yet I can do it. And that's my pride, that's my confidence, that's my raw training, you know, raw training without the fancy fanfare. Whatever I've learned stays with me till the day I die because, you know, there were no shortcuts. So there you go, that's, that's a bit about uh, how uh, I've got myself together and, 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 you know, how tough it's been to be where I am today. So when people scoff and people, you know, act silly, I just want to laugh at them, you know, because eventually if they challenge me, I'll show them their place. Because, you know, whatever's earned hard lasts longer. That's the, that's the rule of uh, the universe. That is the rule of nature. So, so much to see you later on another live. I think all my uh, fans, friends, and uh, regular live viewers are on Instagram. So, I don't think that they've managed to uh, come on to my live. But yes, there you go. My fitness journey, my sports skull mentality, all in a nutshell for you with this video. Stay fit and believe in yourself.